Sexy People Podcast. I'm Dan Frigga. Let him here with my guest, Lil Babs. Thank you for being here. No, yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Give us like a quick like uh, like intro to you and your content. What's the best way to describe? Sum yourself up in a minute. Okay. I mean, basically, I just do OnlyFans. I do a few shoots. I do any content that anyone asks me for. <laughs> okay, so customs and OnlyFans. How did you find yourself mm-hmm. um, in this OnlyFans world? Um, at this stage of the, of, of earth? Um, I mean, I basically, I mean, I always kind of wanted to do sex work. Like that was something that I, like I've known I wanted to do my entire life pretty much. No shit. So I just, yeah, no. Wait, wait, so, 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 wait, so what, so what age do you start going, I'm going to be a sex worker? Probably like 12. Really? I, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. In middle school, I knew for a fact that I would be a porn star. No I, shit. I just always thought it was cool. Really? Okay. So wait. So who did you do? Like idolize somebody when you're 12? Like, how do you know? I don't. I, I don't. I don't want to. It's like sound weird or naive, but like, how do you know what porn is? What is your sexual experience level at 12? How did all of these things culminate to make you like interested in this? Oh God. I mean, I, I found. I mean, I was always just on the internet. Like, I I, I found it by like. You know those browsers memes like on iFunny because I had iFunny at the time and I just I don't know I didn't have a specific person that I liked but I used to I used to like do like role plays really um yeah kind of embarrassing but yeah I used to have like a little my little pony account and would role play with people online no shit and wait at how like, yeah at, wait are we breaking any laws like at how old were you doing this stuff you're ju- you're ju- this is non-sexual role play yeah i was also doing like sexual role play <laughs> so okay. i don't know if that's technically because I, I wasn't sending any pictures of myself right. or anything it was just pure like, i don't know texting. i don't know what it would take i don't know what the law is when, how old do you have to be to be like a, a sexed worker you know, I don't know what that <laughs> age would be. Wait, so you were what? You're 12, 13, 14, and you're having highly mm-hmm. sexual conversations with strangers on the internet. Yeah, mostly through like Instagram and Kick. I had Kick at the time. Yeah, I remember Kick. Kick was yeah. Kick, I didn't know, but anytime somebody anybody would send me their Kick, I was like, oh, we're uh, this is gonna be we're gonna be doing nudes soon. Like Kick mm-hmm. took the place of like Snapchat immediately. Is Kick still yeah, a thing? Pretty much. It is still <laughs> kind of people... yeah. I think people are bringing it back. <laughs> Uh, wait, so how old are you now? Um, 18. You are 18. And so how long have you had your account? Mm-hmm. Uh, just like a few months. Okay. All right. Is it everything you anticipated it to be? Um, It's way more work than I ever thought it would be. Okay. Especially, yeah, like making this. Yeah, because it's all social media and making social media accounts is pretty hard. It's from yeah. scratch. Are you getting, are you getting like, um, are you getting, have you gotten uh, canceled and deleted yet? Have you had that, that um, the joy of that yet? Yeah. On a TikTok, I've gotten my TikTok banned. Really? What, what, what did you, mm-hmm. wait, you got them taken down or you had to lost the whole account? I lost the whole account. What, what were you doing that TikTok was not happy with? Um, I went on a live yeah, it's probably mostly my fault because I did direct people to Twitter from my life because because someone asked me if they could send me like, you know, a dick pic. And I was like, well, you can do that on my Twitter. Oh, are you not allowed <laughs> so, to send people away? Or is it the fact know. that I they was, said that thing and you specifically sent it there? Yeah, yeah, I think it was more just that I was like saying the word dick. To right. be honest. Oh, you said dick. <laughs> mm hmm. Got it. Yeah, not not my brightest move. Got it. And this is, wait, how long was this recently? Yeah, just like a few weeks ago. Okay. I, okay, so I don't, I've never, this is so fun already. I don't know how to ask the questions I want to ask. I don't know how mm-hmm. to ask somebody who always wanted to be a porn star how that works. Um, like, it's not a normal dream. How, like, did you, were you telling okay. people? And then when you, so, and then were you just waiting, like, um, like with a countdown for when you were 18 and you could post content legally? Like, how did this go down? I mean, yeah, pretty much. I just, I, I don't, I don't think I really told people. I just, I've always been very sexual. Like yeah. I wanted to have sex as soon as I found out like what sex was. What I just was. found it really, I just found it really interesting. It took me a while, like, cause yeah, I wasn't like as attractive as a kid. So it took me to like, 
my freshman year of high school to finally have sex. So and then wait, I so realized, what's the, wait, so like, how old is that? Um, um, 15. So this is so funny. Um, or 14. No one would imagine you having a hard time getting laid. And it's just so funny because, <laughs> like, the fans of you can completely relate to that idea. Because, like, as mm -hmm. soon as we're, like, as soon as we're, we're like, able as, as boys to, like, figure out what's going on down there, we're, like, bombarded with this idea that, like, there should be sex or we could have sex. And then, like, then that next step comes where, like, we're never going to be able to figure out how to, how to let someone um let us fuck them and so it's just so funny <laughs> that you had to deal with that same uh that same issue which nobody i don't think anybody nobody believes you by the way um <laughs> so um so you waited your three years from when you found out what mm -hmm. sex was till you had it um and so the content now because of the the platforms that you're on are you doing mostly solo content or are you doing partnered content what do you what do you what do you put out um, I do a lot of a lot of both. Yeah, no, I have like um, a few collabs coming up at the end of the month. I'm actually going to both Las Vegas and Los Angeles. To oh, very shoot. cool. Yeah, a bunch of stuff. Like, yeah. Yeah. We're even going to have like an orgy, <laughs> apparently. Okay. So I'm like, I can't, yeah, first one. So I can't wait for that. Yeah. I, I, yeah. So right now, um, right now, girl, girl, girl. So what do you what do you say? Say again. It's just boy, girl, and girl, girl, because I haven't had any. Well, I have one, literally one threesome video. That's it. Right now. Yeah. Got it. And so uh, what kind of content are you looking to put out this year? And how are you promoting this stuff? And I guess is the goal then, if you're going to Vegas and L.A., is the goal to shoot commercial? Shoot mainstream? Um, yeah. 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 Uh... Well, no, the ones that I'm going to are just collabs with like other creators. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but eventually I might get into some more commercial stuff. I have some people like who are trying to get me some gigs. So we'll see. Um, yeah, the second, yeah. the second you turn, you turn 18, people are for sure throwing opportunities at you. <laughs> I don't know. I just thought I've been, I've been mostly networking through Twitter and just through Twitter spaces. And I found a, like I found people who are, yeah, agents, and they've been trying to help me find gigs. I also tend to find a lot of my own gigs just through sexy jobs and just kind of do whatever. Explain sexy jobs to people. Sexy jobs is basically a website for, for any sex worker, really. And it's just where, like, there's a bunch of agencies and, like, with different websites. And it's where you, it's where you get jobs for porn gigs, mostly, or, like, yeah, there's a lot of camming sites on there. Just any sort of sex work job you can kind of find on and which, that website. And what's your goal, right? Like, what's your goal with this whole thing right now? Like, because you, you entered at a weird time. So, like, if, mm -hmm. if you were born at a different time, there was no OnlyFans, right, four years ago. Mm -hmm. And so you'd be in a completely different spot. So right now you have the ability to, like, uh, build your own audience, do all these things through the Internet, do this stuff. Um, and that seems to be, like, what everyone would rather do now, but I haven't met anybody yet who's like interested in crossing over to then to then shooting the mainstream stuff because that became what people didn't want to do because now they could be their own boss and they could do their own things. Mm -hmm. Like uh, because you entered the world where OnlyFans is the starting point, um, does that make your goals different? I guess from somebody who just found OnlyFans now and is trying to adapt. I mean, my goal is basically just to make enough money to move out. Yeah. Wait, do you so, live with your folks right now? What's move out? Yeah, I live with my mom right now. You literally in your <laughs> like in your mom's basement making porn. Mm -hmm. This is a porn <laughs> in itself. Yeah. Is she is she aware of your of your life and what's going on? Yeah, no, she's uh she's cool with it. It took her a little while to be more comfortable with it. Like obviously she was just a little bit like that, oh, but she's very sweet. She's just like whatever makes you happy. Interesting. Well, how do you pitch it so that it um so that the the you know the 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 freedom of it and the um and the expression of it come forward. Um, I mean, I mean, I'm still kind of my own boss, no matter like if I'm doing porn shoots or if I'm doing OnlyFans, because even yeah. even the shoots, it's like I can just decide which shoots I want to do at which places, like who I I still decide who I want to work with. 
so I still got a lot of freedom in like that sense. And I'm not going to like, I'm not going to assign to like an agency or something like that. Right. Well, and what, so what's your work ethic? You said it's harder than you thought, or it's more work than you thought. Mm -hmm. So what's your work ethic now? How, like how many hours are you spending doing this whole thing? God, I mean, it takes a, like four hours a day, at least I would say of just like making all like the TikToks, taking pictures yeah making these solo content and then actually shooting like anything with someone it, it takes a lot of time so four hours a day okay mm -hmm. all right well and then what are you doing what are you doing with the rest of the day what's what would you be doing if you weren't shooting your porn all day long um <laughs> what would you be doing i mean right now i just mostly play video games all day yeah you have the whole I, I would... gamer setup yeah so are you, exactly. do you do you have like a follow do you have like a twitch following and all that have you been able to build another like a separate following um i just started getting back on twitch um so i just have like a little small audience there but i, I just mostly do it for fun like yeah. i like twitch streaming i like live streaming i think it's really fun to do so uh. so this isn't a thing i've talked about because i know i know what uh, i know what the other um platforms when you're getting banned and stuff is there stuff that you can do on twitch that will get you booted from twitch what's what are yeah, their bylaws or whatever i know like i can't put like i can't advertise my links at all like even my link tree i can't put that in you can't put link tree think... because the link tree will get banned or because it, it'll because it scans what, what's in the link tree it'll yeah it'll see that it's in the link tree and i think I my it, my whole account might get banned. So I, see. I just avoid that. But I'm pretty sure you can like talk about whatever you want. Like I, I'll say that I do only fans. I'll say that I do porn on there. Like, yeah. and I haven't had any strikes for that. Have you been able to cross out? Like, are you getting people to cross over? Like what's the, what's the best way to get somebody to your only fans right now? The best way is TikTok for sure. Is it like, yeah, TikTok and Reddit are like the main two platforms that just generate the most amount of people coming in. Yeah. Well, how do, wait, so how do you cross them over from TikTok? I thought I thought on TikTok you couldn't put the the links. Uh, Instagram, you connect your Instagram. So you go from TikTok people... to Instagram back to OnlyFans. Yes, exactly. Got you have it. the link tree in the bio. People find it that way, and yeah, that's definitely had the most success for me. Okay. Um, what kind of content are you doing on TikTok that is um, salacious enough to <laughs> uh, entice people, but not um, like? like tawdry enough to get you banned i try to just do just the classic like funny relatable stuff like a little skit or something yeah like i'll mention squirting or something like <laughs> the word squirt won't get you banned so i'll just like do a little funny tiktok about just like yeah one of my biggest ones was just kind of a joke where it's like back and forth where it's like oh you want to come back to my place like sure but you're gonna need a towel that's the whole joke <laughs> got it that's that's the whole thing I see. And then yeah. that, and then, and then that gets them to your Instagram. That gets them to your, your TikTok. Cause yeah. like, or they're to your only fans. Cause they're like, I have to see this. <laughs> squirt. Pretty um, much. Yeah. All right. Well, so is that, so is that your, is that the majority of your content? Well, how many, so how, how many photos, videos would you say you have on only fans right now? God, I mean, hundreds right are you now. Putting, and how many are you putting up a day? And what are you, and right now you're what you're a subscription paid subscription only. And then once you're in there, your everything is available to you or once i get in am i buying more stuff i do do pay-per-view um so yeah you do have, like the actual like boy girl and girl girl and all that stuff is all like behind a paywall yeah but and i do the subscription i was thinking about yeah no i was thinking about changing that but i'm not sure yet well so what do i get so let's tell everybody what do they get so how much is it what do i get when i come in uh, right out of the gate yeah. right now i post yeah i post at least once a day and i still i still do post myself like squirting and not, like just and just like all like the nudes and all that stuff because i don't post much nudity elsewhere yeah so so what so how much how much to get into your only fans and what is your only fans link um it's 7.99 right now and my only fans is uh only fans um slash break me bab break me bab Yes, because uh, because e Breaking Bad. It's a good. It's a good. It's a good play on words. <laughs> I like it. Um, Thank you. So wait. So can we, tell, can we tell people where you're based? Uh, yeah, I'm in Florida. Florida. And how much does Florida, um, play into the content that you create or or who you are as a person? 
God. I think, yeah, I, I feel like my my opinion is that the most sex workers come out of Florida. Okay. I just, yeah, I, yeah. Cause I There's grew up something like, in the Central water? Florida. Yeah. Everyone's very, everyone's very unique and they're all typically very, either very leftist or very right. And it just brews a lot of very interesting personalities, I would say. Sure. Well, Florida's always been like a, a place where you're probably going to have to show your body because it's so hot. Nobody wants to wear clothes. Mm-hmm. So Florida's always been a place where like, showing your body is important. I don't even know. I don't even know if that means that body positivity is up in Florida, but, um, but I know that, that, um, you know, I, I grew up in New York and we didn't like, there was like, we're like trying to get abs for like two months. Like that's what we're doing. But when you go to Florida, everybody's always like ready to whip their shirt off. It's just kind of always what it's mm-hmm. been. So I think you're not wrong on that. And there are, and there's all, there's whole pockets of Florida, Miami and Tampa where content's being made. Um, mm-hmm. so, you're in good, so you're in good company. Um, so, are, um, can we tell, can, I, I, I want to talk a little bit about like, um, the, so where you live now, is that where you grew up? Pretty much. Yeah. Like I wasn't born here, but I moved like literally after one year, okay. <laughs> like I was, yeah, I was born in Massachusetts, Okay. but I moved pretty much immediately. So I don't remember that whatsoever. And, and I've just been in Florida. I used to not, be, I used to be in kind of more like in the like rural parts of Florida yeah. but now, but I moved to like central, central Florida in like the third grade. And I've been there ever since. So what city are you closest to? Orlando. And so how much does, how much does the mouse when you grow up in that area, <laughs> like make your experience of the world or like view shape your, your experience of the world, knowing that there's this, I mean, the, that whole place, depending on how close mm-hmm. you are to it, is just this this tourist magnet. And so, like, me growing up, I didn't understand any of that kind of thing until I, like, saw Times Square for the first time. So, and I know people, like, talk about the mouse a lot. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I wanted to see your perspective if you felt like it shaped your entire experience growing up. Yeah, I feel like people are just typically less judgmental, like, there. Like, you know, like, I have friends in Utah who are trying to do sex work, but they have to do it completely, like, faceless. But sure. it's like for here, like it's pretty normal for, especially now with OnlyFans, it's pretty normal. And I rarely even get anyone who is like super judgmental or gross yeah. about it. So, yeah, so but how did, know. but how did being in that tourist, in that tourist world shape your, your concept of like, um, like something about Orlando too is weird. Cause that's where all the boy bands came out of. Like, there's just something mm-hmm. down there that changes people's perspective of like, guess like sh- like like being part of like a show or being part of like a commercial aspect do you think that that's true yeah i feel like a lot of people definitely want to get famous here yeah i like i, I don't know i don't really know exactly like what's the big difference because i mean i've lived in florida my entire life but yeah. yeah it is a big thing where like everyone like I said, every, it brews the most interesting personalities. I think everyone here is very different and unique as and not very and just not very sheltered about themselves. Yeah. Have you been able to find a large sex work community to be able to, to work with people or are you find that you're converting friends or how are you finding um, these these content partners? Um, honestly, I had a trouble and like until like I found literally one girl, a uh, gossip. And like she found me just on like seeking of all places, and, but other than that, I I barely found a lot of people who are actually in Orlando. Like most people yeah. are typically in like Miami, surprisingly. Yeah. I don't know. Well, and then what's what would be the what would be the um, what are the other ways to do it? I think I think a lot of people just think that um, if I can like 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 water it down, I think a lot of people just think like, oh, you're single, you like hook up with somebody why don't you just shoot with them explain why that's not really like the way to to approach this well most people are like because shooting is really different than actually having sex so it's like most people are like they're camera shy they just they aren't really let into it like the idea of because it is like more structured it's not really exactly like it's not like having sex at all 
Uh, they're not used to it. OnlyFans apparently also might make it so you have to shoot with other content creators, but I, I'm not 100% sure about that. Where they where they have to have a page that they can reference? Mm -hmm. You mean? Yeah. I think they're. I think we're closer and closer to that. I think because I think even people that I knew that were doing um, that were doing content with other people, that some stuff was happening and things were getting taken down or banned, and so it's mm -hmm. encouraging people to just make solo content. Um, yeah. Whether or not the market, whether or not that's what people want. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know what's what's uh, what's long long term goal. Like I mean, you're 18 years old. This is brand new. How long? Um, when you set out to do this, do you think it's something that you're going to do? I mean, I know you said you wanted to move out, but that's not going to be the end all be all, right? No, I think, I mean, ideally the goal is top 0.1% and, and where are like, you I'll now? do it. Um, I'm at like top 5% right now. Okay. But yeah, so it's just like, yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll just do it as long as people will have me pretty much. I'll probably just do it. I'll, I might just have it my whole life just because like, I'm sure I'll still get some money from it. Even if I do eventually lose people. Right. Uh, but I still like I'm in college and stuff. Yeah. You're in physical college or you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're doing um, online stuff. Uh, physical. Okay. I can't do online classes. I'll just forget about them. Is that right? Wait. So, um, and then before college, what were you? So you're 18, you just got to college. Um, so then you, so you were in high school you did high school. Yep. And then in college. What are you studying in college? Psychology. Okay. Interesting. How is that? Mm -hmm. How are you finding, um, how are you finding that that affects the content that you think about and the way that you think about what you're doing? I just find it interesting that like most people who, uh, do this line of work have a lot of mental disorders. Like I, that's honestly what I find the most fascinating. Are you finding that it. in the studying? Are they saying just, that people that are sex workers are, are, are broken people? <laughs> no, no. Just, I mean, just by like people I talk to, yeah. like on Twitter and all that, I've just noticed like, all, like almost all of us at least have one mental disorder or something. And I just, Interesting. yeah, and maybe, yeah, whenever I'm studying, I'll probably like actually like do a study about that and look into that. Yeah. I mean, we, we definitely need some new studies. I think, you know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of old ideas floating around. Yes. about who sex workers are. And I think it's also, I think it's changed a lot mm -hmm. because the old, the old example of who would be successful in this business might not um, apply anymore because you know, the people that might be successful in this business now might be people that like will read an algorithm and figure out how to trend and those sorts of things. And that wasn't something you had to worry about in 1994 or whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. So that is interesting. Wait, so what, what mental disorders are you claiming? I have, I have anxiety, I have bipolar okay. two, and I have borderline personality. Okay. Do you find, so are you, is, are, are all these things manageable at this stage? With medication, yeah. I, I like just had to call my psychiatrist because I need new medication, but yeah. it can be pretty difficult. Sure. It's, well, how far into yeah. your job? I mean, you're pretty, you're pretty soon. I mean, as we saw with, with Kanye, I, you know, it's just, it's just a very popular example. A lot of people don't realize that they're bipolar until much later in life. What was your experience in finding out? Um, and then how did you feel about like the possibilities of keeping it under control when you did find out? It really, it really did surprise me to be honest, because I just grew up like thinking that I had depression, like sure. for sure. Cause I didn't even know like bipolar two was a thing. Right. Like, and that's like, brand, that's like a brand new name for this thing. Right. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly like how new it is. Like I literally just found out about it. Like and a week, a month, a year. Um, yeah, maybe a few months ago. Okay. So this is post Kanye. So, so then you have some, <laughs> so you have some like, you have some like, uh, um, uh, what's the word I want? Like a, like a person in the media that like that like uh, challenges our perspective of things. So what what did you think when it first happened? Did you did you relate yourself to uh, Kanye and all the stuff that he was going through? Kinda. It just I'm, it mostly just made me sad that he just won't go on his medication. Sure. Because I feel like he is kind of giving us a bad a bad rep a little bit. Right. 
just going completely off the rails when it's like it is pretty manageable like medication helps a lot like it, yeah it just makes it way less extreme well, so explain that for people, because I, I I still haven't been in a position where taking a drug um, gives me a noticeable change in the things that I that I'm struggling with. Right. So explain mm-hmm. to us what it feels like to be on medicated and then what it might feel like to be medicated in this case. It is just like on medication i don't feel my emotions like nearly as deeply because yeah like i if i'm not on medication i can go on like a crying episode for like hours whereas like when i'm on medication it's hard for me to even cry like yeah it's Wait, a lot so more it's, so why is that better because like because i am like you know i'm not a suicidal <laughs> like i just okay. you know it makes life a little more manageable i'm not yeah nearly as depressed as when i'm on medication and then do you find that uh when you're on the other side if like do you get these do you get the manic swings have you been in those positions um a little bit yeah and then how does that manifest for you what things are you involved in when you're on that side of the coin luckily i don't get too manic but i mostly it just makes me really productive it kind of sucks i think most people with bipolar will say this but i prefer to be in a manic episode than not because i can actually like like i'll just do everything like i think no i think everybody i think that's what everybody loves and it's like mm -hmm. and and the fact that it comes with the other side is so frustrating they're like if i Mm -hmm. could just harness this one then Mm -hmm. i could literally be on top of the world i mean that's that's part of the thing is you know making grand plans and um you know thinking that you can accomplish anything um which you know that what's funny is you know is that that the manic side is kanye's like outward like like persona to the world Mm -hmm. that's who we've known him to be the whole time um, so to know that he might be, uh, it's interesting that you, know, that you know, that, that you feel your feelings too much. Um, mm-hmm. that's an interesting way to put it. I don't know how I want to, um, follow up with that at the moment, <laughs> but that's interesting. But do you think, do you think being uh, bipolar two has anything to do with why you want to be a sex worker? Do you find, think, um, like, like through lines? Honestly, I think it's more just the borderline because I yeah. like, it's a personality disorder. I feel like. I've always wanted to be quote unquote cool. I've always wanted to be an interesting person. And even like when I was younger, and I know this isn't the best way to think, but I've always thought like sex, drugs and all that shit was cool. Yeah. Like I thought it was like, what's the other shit? Rock and roll is the other end of that. So Mm -hmm. sex, sex and rock and roll. That's those are the three. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So I've always just wanted to be that, that party goer, that sex worker, like that person who is just in, in my eyes cool and interesting right well and i think that that's well it's interesting because uh there's a there's a there's a large gap between us 20 years between us and so what was cool when i was your age um has has transformed a little bit you know and that's that's what a lot of these movies are doing now is like the the people that were the cool people are now the nerdy people and it's sort of like reversed um so but you're still you're still like lamenting for this this world where like you're like a party girl around a lot of people with drugs and sex, <laughs> which is mm-hmm. more like maybe like a like a like like a sixties dream, right? Like they kind of destroyed that for us in seventies and eighties and nineties when they tried to add disease and consequence to drugs and jail time and all those sorts of things. So I find it interesting because I do think that that, that the the archetype for, for who's successful in your industry now is the people that maybe are on the spectrum and can like figure out how to just sit down and make content and can figure out how to like decode Twitch and like that whole party and be like sociable aspect has been removed from it. Um, so I think it's interesting that that's still kind of your, um, your, your, your goal with that whole thing. Um, or that that's, or that that's what you view as cool. Like who's okay. So like, Who's your who's your like rock star archetype like in your head? Who's the the idol? Oh god, I mean probably Riley Reed. I think yeah, I okay. think if I could be anyone, I would be her. Okay, that's not a bad pick. Can you tell us why. Just, I mean, being a famous porn star, I feel like would just be like just amazing. Like getting like going to all these awards and like, I mean, I've always yeah, I 
I've always wanted to be famous. I think that being famous is just, it's cool. It's validating. It's like every, like you have so many people who are like, who not only know you, but also jack off to you. Right. <laughs> I don't know. I so just think that's, that's, an, that's an interesting thing. So it's like, um, so to some extent, uh, the, the, the voyeurism is, is sexy to you because there's no way you could please all of these people in person, but you can mm-hmm. please them from afar. And that's, that's also sexy. That also turns you on. Yeah. I, I love the idea of people jacking off to me. Like, yeah, I guess it's also because I, like, I grew up struggling to even have anyone to like, try to have sex with me. You didn't, so it's like the, you didn't struggle. <laughs> I, by the time I was you, I hadn't had sex yet. I want you to know. You didn't. I, I was literally asking people and they were like, no, <laughs> like I well, didn't was, have a boyfriend, nothing. Right. But there was a reason you were 14, 15, right? Like, yeah. like some, some of the people were like, hold on, I'm going to go to prison. Um, <laughs> so, mm-hmm. so, so that's fair. All right. Well, so, so now that you're, 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 you're an only fan, what do you think it's going to take for you to identify yourself as a porn star? When do you feel um, like you're going to, you're going to be able to like label yourself that? I just need to do some more shoots, which I, yeah, I have some more coming up. So I like, I feel like even if you do one shoot, you're kind of a porn star and I have done a shoot in the past. So I don't know. Like, I, I love well, it's your label, like right? One. So it's, so it's whatever you want. Cause it's interesting. Cause like, cause, mm-hmm. you know, I've done other ones where people my age now are sort of like in this space where those are the people that I and you would call porn stars. And I think we're slowly starting to like diminish this phrase and get rid of it. Cause it doesn't really mean what it used to. And maybe it never meant anything. Um, so it's just interesting to, to talk to you and, and, and you want to reach that pinnacle. Um, whereas so many other people are like trying to like, uh, minimize that idea. And, and maybe get rid of it completely. Um, but no, it's your label. So it's like you get to decide, yeah, when whenever you whenever you consider yourself a porn star, that's that's for you to decide, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, you're getting I'm paid just... mm-hmm. <laughs> to, yep. to do the things. Um, so I guess, I don't know. I mean, what would be the best case scenario right now? You, you walk out of the house and somebody's like, hey, somebody you've never met walks up to you and goes, hey, are you little babs? That would, that would make your day. Yeah, that would. Yeah, that's probably. Yeah, that's an ultimate goal to be recognized yeah. one day. That would be cool. That would be cool as fuck. And what else you want to? So you want to go to the awards? So you're talking about AVN. You're talking about what else? You're talking mm-hmm. about what other? What other award shows do you have um, in your mind? I just like the Pornhub Awards specifically. Like yeah. that seems like such a cool event. And like to get an award too. Like like not just to go. I want to get an award for some right. crap. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that's that's interesting. What in what in I yeah I've never been I've never been in a position where um, where somebody's starting out and had and had these these uh, these types of goals and these ideas and 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 had um, like fantasized um, as mm-hmm. a child about being in porn. I think that's but that's I feel like that's a world that we're supposed to be in at this point. Like I mean that's that's some element of why this podcast exists was even when I was your, when I was young, when I was your age, when I was 12, 13, 14, I already knew that I was like overly sexual compared to other people because Mm -hmm. I knew that like, you know, even wanting to talk to people my age about it, that, that like we were not seeing eye to eye. Um, We did not have the same obsession about it as I had, you know? Mm -hmm. And even, even as an adult, I remember, um, bumping into somebody and they had told me something, they had something, something to the effect of like, if they could have sex once a month that they were like, good. And I remember <laughs> feeling like, I wish, I wish that yeah. would suffice my life. Like once a month, if I can only have sex once a month and be good, I would have a much different, much more productive life. Um, Maybe. And at that time there was no lane. There was no only fans lane. There was no thing that you mm-hmm. could just be an overly sexual person and then find a way to use it to your advantage. Um, We're in a weird place in time where, so, you know, um, again, my generation um, had this idea that if you had nudes somewhere on the internet, that um, eventually you won't be able to like accomplish what you want to accomplish because, because they will resurface. Um, Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? How do you respond to that? I mean, you're from a generation where everybody's just uh, nudes almost have no, no value because everybody is exchanging them. So how do you feel about that idea that like, 
you know, it's this old idea that like, oh, you know, what happens if you want to do something else? And there's these nudes of you resurfacing from somewhere. I, yeah, I just, exactly. I think that's really outdated, especially since so many people have an OnlyFans nowadays. It's like, if we just take all of those people out of the job pool, people are not going to be able to hire anyone. <laughs> right. um, eventually, I think it will even be illegal to not hire someone just because of the fact they had, like, they do porn or they are sexual. Like, I, like, I'll... I wouldn't be surprised if that's like completely outlawed because it's just a dumb and it has nothing to do with your actual qualifications and like how you're actually going to be at that job. Fingers just, crossed on that idea. Mm -hmm. Although with the, you know, with the new, uh, the new legislation changes, I unfortunately feel like we're going the other direction. I feel like we're yeah. going to start outlawing things that we've already um, like, like put a line in the sand and we should have made that sand concrete. Um, but I, but I, but I share your sentiment and I appreciate, um, where you're coming from on that. Well, so what kind of, what kind of, um, timeline are you giving yourself to achieve some of these goals? Um, I mean, hopefully I just hope that I'm honestly, I think I can be top 0.1% in like a year, maybe two. Okay. Yeah. How, what and, do you like? How much information do you have? What like? What do you? What more do you need to be doing to hit that mark? Like, if you're at five percent, I mean, it's all uh, random numbers. They don't tell you what other people's numbers are, right? You can't track other people's numbers, how many followers they have, how much money they're making. What do you mm -hmm. think it's going to take? Just I just posting daily, like post like being on top of myself and like being on that grind. I always say like just making sure I'm putting myself out there on as many platforms as possible as often as I can really. Yeah. Will and yeah, like doing collabs, like all this stuff like will hopefully lead to that. Okay. Well, how so how many subscribers? So what's the subscriber goal number that you have? God, I mean, at least a thousand I would say right now. Okay. So you're under a thousand now and you're still in the top 5%, which, which goes to show that. So, um, like, do you have the numbers? Do you, do you have it down to the science where you know how much each person is spending on you? Um, not exactly. No, I, okay. like I could look and see like specifically, but yeah. Well, like, so how do you, so how do you decide what content to make? That's going to push the envelope to get you to a, to higher numbers. Typically, I mean, I just try to make, I just try to make as much content as possible. So that way, like I have it, like I try to send the pay-per-views out multiple times a week, like just, yeah. Like, so that way there's something for everyone at every single point, I'm trying to diversify it as much as possible too, and do as many like collabs as possible. Right. Okay. I see that. All right. Wait, so uh, pump the pump the OnlyFans one more time because we're not going to be able to put it in the comments anywhere. OnlyFans.com slash break me bab. Break me bab. And then mm -hmm. um, is there is there a link that you can create that we can link to this um, on the SoundCloud side? We can put a link up and not and not be in trouble. Is there a link that you can give us that will tell anybody who listens to this and then clicks the link and then goes directly to your thing that they're coming from this? Is that a link that you can get us? Um, yeah, if you can do link tree, I can send you that. Okay. Or no, but is there like a specific link that you can give us so that you know that it's coming from this particular source? I, yeah, I think it'll track where it comes from. No, okay. 100% sure. Okay. Um, and then that way we know, we know whether or not we're pushing people there. We want people to, to do that. We want people to pay for your porn. We want people to do all those <laughs> things. Are you doing all the, are you doing any other crazy stuff? Are you, are you selling articles of clothing? Are you at that stage in your thing? I would, uh, if people asked me for it, I would definitely do that. Surprisingly, so haven't had that many requests for it, but yeah. All right. What, um, what are the, what, so what do your customs look like? What are you offering people for customs? I, I will do basically anything that won't like get me banned on OnlyFans. So like okay. nothing that doesn't break guidelines, but other than that, I'll say whatever, like, I have people to shoot with, so I can even like shoot with other people for it if they want that. Yeah, like, yeah. Right now, I have someone who's asking me for collabs, and literally, they'll text me throughout the day, like specifically what they want me to do. Yeah, and I so I'll do that. Like, whatever people want. <laughs> I like it. Um, all right. Well, um, let's see. What other 
what what have you found about OnlyFans that you thought was going to be different that um, isn't exactly how you anticipated it? Mostly just how many rules there are. Like, I'm yeah. really surprised. Just, like, you can't do anything with pee. Like, really? Like, is that, on is knives... It, it, Wait, with no P, no knives. Wait, listen, because this is some of the stuff that I don't, I don't have all the information, and, and only as it intersects with each guest. So no P, this has <laughs> never come up. No knives. Yeah, no knives. Uh, no scat. And uh, no um, public. Anything in public. Yeah, um, we've heard that one. Yeah, but this yeah. is all stuff you'd like to be involved in. Yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, you would the do all those things. You would do, stuff. you would do scat play. Maybe not scat play. <laughs> 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 unless they unless it was, they paid enough but right okay fair enough um knives what would you what, what, what would you want to be so then i imagine there's and then there's obviously no guns if there's no knives mm -hmm. yeah just like i have a katana and i wanted to post pictures with that and i, I couldn't you can't even have a, you can't have any kind of weapon in the photo yes nothing in the photo not even it, it doesn't matter whether it's suggestive or not no yeah that's interesting can't, just can't have just can't post them at all that's interesting. That's very interesting. I didn't know that that was one of the that, that was one of the things. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a plant guy. As long as they're not banning plants in the background, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm okay. Um, yeah. All right. Well, um, let's see. What other thing? What other things you want to promote? Promote some stuff. Tell us about how to how to how to how to pay for your stuff and where else you want us to follow you. Well, my Twitter is Break Me Bab. My Instagram is Break Me Bab X, and my Reddit is Broken Bab. At this, and my love, uh, Fet Life is also break me bad. What do you find on Fet Life as a as a way to market? How are you using that as a resource? Uh, it's pretty good. I typically just post on there once a day. You know, put some tags on it, and just like I think it's got gather some traction. Obviously, it's kind of hard get, to and tell. And it'll get you followers. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah, no. Uh, there's a lot of people on Fet Life. So. Yeah, I um, I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that as a resource. Okay. Uh, well, good. Okay. So, um, what else? So you said break, uh, break me bad. All right. Well, uh, thank you for being my guest. Um, mm -hmm. We appreciate your time. Let's get you followers. Let's get you all the things. Let's get you to the point where you're um, on your way to the Pornhub Awards. And then we can do the next, uh, the next interview after that. Uh, we're excited to have you move out of your mom's house. Where do you go? <laughs> where do you go next? Are you going to stay in Orlando if you move out of there? Yeah, I'm gonna stay in the area. And that's long-term goal is to is to be in that area. Um, for at least the next four years, because I'm gonna get my degree down here. Got it. All right, because you're in you're in college, you're finishing up your thing. Um, mm -hmm. now, uh, the value of the, uh, the psychology degree. What's the what's the thought process on that? Long term. Well, I'm eventually gonna move on to get my master's, and then I'm gonna okay. become a clinical psych or yeah, clinical psychologist at one point. You want to be a counselor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Do I you know. think, well, I, th I think it's interesting because I do think um, as somebody who's in therapy, I think it's hard to find someone who um, understands um, sex work. So I think mm -hmm. to be able to talk to somebody who's had that, excuse me, had that background would be very useful for a lot of people. Um, because I think that's one of the things that sex workers go to therapy to talk about. And it's hard mm -hmm. to get understanding in that space. Because yeah. you know you're getting you're getting a 55 year old woman um, who has mm -hmm. her own set of beliefs, and so it's like you know very difficult to like start there and like try to get them to understand where you're coming from. Um, so I commend that idea. I think it's a really good idea. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so break me break break me bab. Um, mm -hmm. Am I saying that right? Yeah, yeah break, break me bab. Me bab. Uh, follow her all the places. We can't put in the links. Uh, we have a new episode every Monday. Uh, happens at midnight. Uh, we're on YouTube, we're on Google, we're on iTunes, all the places that there are podcasts, we're there. And we have this video content today from YouTube. Uh, I know you're looking at a frozen face of me, but I promise <laughs> that there is that there's a version of this where I, uh, I exist. Um, drop a new episode every Monday. Thank you guys for listening and uh, watching. Please spend your money on uh, Break Me Bad. Oh, thank you. Yeah, this was fun. <laughs>